the Lord is my portion and my inheritance. Have you considered what these words mean? When you see a spacious and expansive place and someone tells you there is a portion of this place for you, or when you are told at a great feast there's a portion here for you, let's see what Psalm 119 and the psalmist have to tell us this morning. Because we cannot do it alone, nor should we. Welcome to our devotional, Mana, where we listen to and obey God's voice. We arrive to another section of Psalm 119. The Hebrew word that heads this section is Ehad, which means rushing towards God with my whole heart. And we're going to read this Psalm 119, beginning verse 57, up to verse 64. It says, You are my portion, O Lord. I have said that I will keep your words. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. I love to think about when the Bible says that the Lord is our portion. And so that you better understand, I use the Bible to explain. The people of Israel had 12 tribes. When Joshua conquers the promised land, God orders him to distribute the land amongst the tribes. Amongst these was one called the tribe of Levi. And this was the tribe of the priest. It was dedicated specifically to the service of the temple, the holocaust, and the religious services of the people of Israel. So pay close attention to this. And so God, always thinking of giving each one according to their portion and their inheritance, says each tribe will have a piece of land. And what should each tribe do in, in this land? Well, to sow it, to shepherd the flocks, build cisterns to hold water, and to make the land productive. And so each tribe was to cover their own needs for their women, their children, the families, everyone. And God, thinking about everything, said there's a tribe that is not going to have land for the simple reason that this tribe will be dedicated to the services of the temple so that when you are to go to the temple, the lamps will be on, the doors will be open, praise is being offered. When you bring your sacrifices, they will receive them from your hands and offer sacrifices for you. And so the Lord said to them, since they were not to work in a specific place or on a task on the earth and produce their own food, God said to the other tribes, you are going to take the, ten, the tithe, the 10%, and give it to the tribe of Levi. And the Lord said to the tribe of Levi, you will not have part or portion of the land of the inheritance, but instead I will be your portion. How beautiful, how beautiful it is for God to be able to say to you, I am your portion, I am your inheritance, I am your provider and your sustainer. There's a group of people whom God has said, I am your inheritance and your portion. Do you know what else the Bible says? It says that God defends the poor, the orphan, the widow, the needy, and the foreigner, that he takes special care of them. And this is why the Bible in charges these groups to us so that we are generous with them, how transcendent. And this is why the psalmist in Psalm 119 verse 57 says, you are my portion, O Lord. Now look at the next statement. Because the Lord is my portion, I have said that I would keep your words. Now how do I know that the Lord is my portion? Well, very simply, when I understand that it is His word that sustains me, if the Lord is my portion, then what do I seek? Who do I seek? Well, the Lord. If the word is my sustainment, then I seek the word. Do you recall when the devil tempted Jesus? The devil knew that Jesus had just fasted during 40 days and 40 nights. And the first thing he said to them, to him was, If you are the Son of God, make these rocks become bread. To which Jesus replied, Man will not live on bread alone, but instead of the word that comes from God's mouth. This is what it means to understand that my portion and my inheritance is God. And that even if I am hungry, it is not the nourishment itself that sustains me. It is God and His provision. And do you know why we as human beings get in trouble? We tell ourselves lies. We try to help God. There are those going through difficulties and in debt. And, and they go and get into more debt. Others choose to steal. And we do what is human. 
Of course, because this is what is normal to us. Any, any human being in need will seek how to resolve their situation somehow. But some choose to do it the wrong way. But when I understand that the Lord is my portion, that the Lord is my provider, that the Lord is my sustainer, that I, what I must trust in is that the word that God has told me is true. I remember when Jesus once said to the people, Why do you concern yourselves and worry more for the dress than the body? Why do you worry more for the nourishment, for the food than life itself? And that day the Lord also said to them, Do you not see the birds? They do not go around worried, anxious. They live their lives knowing that the Father who created them gives them their food each day. Have you not seen the flowers of the field? They have no one to sew for them or dress them. And not even Solomon with all his riches can dress like them. How can I not give you more than the animals and the flowers of the field? Ye men of little faith. And when the Lord gives this extreme example, we are left at awe because our entire lives we've been filled with insecurities of life. What are we to eat? What's going to happen to us? How can we pay? We do not have money. And this is why everything in the life of a human being becomes a race to seek money. In the things we do, there are people who sell their bodies to get money. There are those who sell their bodies to have luxuries. And some even try to legitimize it. There are some young women and men today who say that they sell their bodies to pay for the universities because they have to do whatever it takes to reach provision. No, you do not have to do anything it takes. It is about giving things their place. I do not know what your situation may be today, but what I do know is that many are going through hard times, sometimes financially, with shortages, with difficulties. Have you understood this dimension, the dimension of this portion we're reading about this morning? Your portion is the Lord. Do not underestimate this portion. Because if the Lord is your portion, your provision, your sustainer, your provider, do you recall Abraham? God told him to sacrifice his son, and he went and carried out the task up to the end. But at the end, God said, no, do not do it. And when he turned and looked, there was a lamb tangled in a bush. And this scene was what made Abraham call his God, Jehovah Jared, which means... The Lord is my provider. When God is going to give something to someone, he does not need help. God does not need you to help him, nor to stick your hand in, or to be worried, or be filled with anxiety. But what happens is that something needs to first occur in your heart. And this is to believe that God is my portion, my provider, my sustainer. There's a parallel scene. It's not the same, but with this, I'm going to try to explain to you what God feels when I try to use other methods to reach him, Israel as a people in the Old Testament, in the old days, they were a monotheist people. What does this mean? It means Israel as a people did not have any more gods, only one God, God himself. In addition to this, in addition to this, they had a theocracy. What does this mean? It means that God was the king of Israel the only king of the people of Israel. And this is why you would see the kings carry out governing roles, but directed by God. As you see, David consulted God and Josephat. When going out against the enemy, the army of the enemy, he prayed and fasted before going into battle. And why? Because they believed in the governing of God over their people, God's governance over their people. But there's a very powerful scene in 1 Samuel 8. It says that one day Israel began to complain, saying, O oh Lord, how is it that the gods of the nations have kings, but not us? Our kings, or the king of our nation is God. How is that? No, we want a king just the way the other nations have kings. Wow, do you know what happened to the prophet when he heard this? The prophet cried and he said to the people, What a barbarity, how dare you say this? How is it that you want to have a king like the other peoples and you do not want God as your king? But God said to the prophet, Look, do not worry. Today, the people have not discarded me. Excuse me, have not discarded you. They've discarded me. 
and I'm going to tell you what the kings are going to do with you. Your kings are going to charge you taxes. Your kings are going to enslave you. Your kings are going to take your children. They will live like kings in you, impoverished. That day, God prophesied what we see today in many governments around the world. And why? Because they discarded God as king. And this is what happens to us when we discard God as our portion and our inheritance. Why do people want to have an inheritance? Why do people want to have riches here and like to feel secure? Why do people want to have luxuries more than anyone else? To show appearances. Why? Because they have not understood one of the greatest truths of the Bible. And this is that my portion is the Lord. And I'm going to give you another piece of information. The day that I die, I'm not going to come out in the headlines of a newspaper or magazine because I was not famous or powerful, nor was I on the list of the richest men in the world. But I will be on a list that when I arrive to heaven, I will be told, welcome home. Here is your portion and your inheritance. Because your portion and your inheritance were the Lord, was the Lord. And so I just want to ask you one question this morning. What do you want at the end of the road, at the end of life? What are you working for? Because I know the majority are working to pay off a house, to leave an inheritance. The truth, I've been very honest with my children. And I've said to them, the inheritance that has been left to me is the Lord. And the inheritance I have for you is the Lord. In this world in which we live, there will not be left stone over stone. The psalmist understood this. My portion is the Lord. I have said that I would keep your words. And why? Because God's word is what sustains this. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. Let's continue reading verses 59 and 60. I thought about my ways and turned my feet to your testimonies. I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. Look, I made haste and did not delay in what? To keep your commandments. And why? Because this is what we have to do now, not tomorrow, not later. Verses 61 and 62 say, The cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight I will rise to give you thanks, to give thanks to you, because of your righteous judgments. And this section ends saying, I am a companion of all who fear you. And of those who keep your precepts, the earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being my portion. Thank you for being my inheritance. Thank you for being my provider. If you are a single mother raising a child or children, allow me to tell you that God is the provider of your home. If you are alone but have a great obligation, allow me to tell you that God is your provider. Whatever your financial situation may be today, allow me to tell you that God wants to become the portion for your life. And how can you receive this portion each morning? Well, going to his word each day, depending 100% on him, on his will, and on his perfect plans. Father, we give you our lives, our hearts. We give you glory and thank you for loving us with eternal love. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. And I wait for you tomorrow in our Friday of prayer in Mana. Blessings to all.